You know, I still like what I'm doing. I really enjoy coaching. I enjoy working with young people. And the Cardinals have won the national championship. He looks for the best in everybody. He sees the best in everybody. He would always tell us players to make good decisions. Of course, he wanted us to make good decisions on the floor, but he also wanted us to make good decisions in our daily lives. Like he, one of the true icons of the game. Every practice, every game, everything he did, he was scripted and prepared. That stuck with me. So we, we you know, we have, uh, we feel an obligation to uh, do the best we can and make this community a better place to live. For many years and to many people, Denny Crum has been the face of the University of Louisville. Cool hand Luke. Because whenever I needed to do something, I did it. In the words of the coach himself. Well, it's the day Cardinal fans here and around the country have been dreading. Hall of Fame basketball coach Denny Crum, after a long illness, died this morning at his home, surrounded by his loved ones. And tonight here at 530, WHAS 11 News presents Denny Crum, A Hall of Fame Life. Hello, everybody. I'm Doug Prophet, along with sports director Kent Spencer. And uh, Kent, so many great stories are coming out about Denny Crum today. We're going to hear a lot of them during this 30 minutes. No, absolutely. And I think you're going to find out just how special of a person Denny Crum was if you didn't already. Let's just take what he did on the court. Two national championships, six Final Fours, 675 victories. But if you knew anything at all about Denny Crum, he was so much more than the numbers he accumulated. When Denny Crum walked into an arena, he carried with him a confidence, a calmness. It was why he was known as Cool Hand Luke. Because whenever I needed to do something, I did it. I can't remember ever him losing his cool or getting, um, you know, frustrated or really upset in the huddle. He was always like, okay, here's what we need to do. Crum came to Louisville in 1971 after being a longtime assistant at UCLA under his mentor, legendary coach John Wooden. It didn't take long for Crum to put the cards on the map, leading them to the Final Four in 1972 and 1975. And it was after that season, his alma mater came calling after Wooden retired. He went out to UCLA. Uh, they wanted him. They offered him the job. He came back to Louisville. He had made up his mind he was going to take the job. Okay, this is right after 19. This is 75. He gets back to his office. And a friend of his, Gene Sullivan, called him. And Gene was a pro out at Wildwood. And he said, hey, Denny, we need a fourth. Can you come over and play? And that one phone call changed his mind. He stayed in Louisville. Now you ask, well, how, how could that happen? And he said, that didn't happen out in LA. You know, it was really tough to get, you know, get a tea time for one thing and just go play. He said, only Louisville. And, and that changed his mind. The rest, they say, is history. Crum led Louisville to capture the 1980 National Championship. We still won it when it, the going got tough. We just hung in there, and I don't know how it happened, but it did. That was his first, so yeah, it's, that's special. It was special to this community, to our fans. It was the first. Crum would go on to win a second national title with Louisville in 1986. The wins, the milestones continued to pile up, and in 1994, he was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. But to me, it is truly very, very important. Now that you've placed me here among those who have played and coached the game with great success, I am honored and humbled beyond anything I could have imagined. Perhaps his biggest gift, his impact on people. Not many can take their biggest rival. Well, we asked Coach Hall. And he wouldn't give you an answer, would he? Well, he, he uh, tried to walk out in the interview, actually. Yeah, well, that's typical. And become the best of friends, like he did with Joe B. Hall. We had a good, close relationship that was uh, just like we'd known each other forever. It also goes without saying the lives he changed of those who suited up for him wearing Cardinal Red a message that remained the same over the years. To give to each other and to, to, to be uh, unselfish players. If they did that, then uh, that would carry over to their lives as well. It was such a positive 
influence on us at such a young age. So when you have someone like that, okay, it's like a father figure, you know, or, or big brother or, or you know, whoever um, type of person that can really make, make a difference in your life, have an impact on you. And he had an impact on me and, and all of us. In 2001, Crum stepped down and retired, but remained in Louisville. Throughout the years, he received countless deserving honors from the university and community he loved so much, and from those he once called a rival. One of the true icons of the game, and uh, someone that I've admired my entire life. No matter who comes and who goes, now and in the future for the Cardinals, Denny Crum will always be Louisville's coach. You know, and through the years, I think, Doug, you can always appreciate that when whenever one of his final four teams are honored at the KFC Yum Center, one of the national championship teams, the ovation Denny Crum always got from the Louisville fan base in this community or even when he was in the stands and everybody knew where Denny Crum sat at the KFC Yum Center about midway up at the lower bowl right at center court. And when they put him on the big screen, the, the showering of praise that he received, you knew it meant a lot to him. It was an event. When you went to a game, you looked for him. It's Coach Crum here today. And that old film of uh, when he and Joby Hall didn't get along, those comments, very amazing how their relationship changed. It, it's amazing how it evolved over the course of the time. You go from bitter rivals, and all of a sudden you become very close friends to doing a radio show together for several years. And then, of course, it, you know, eventually they became like brothers. I mean, they were their families became close. Well, the reactions are coming in, and WHS 11's Shay McAllister is here. She's been getting a lot of those comments. Who are we hearing from, Shay? Well, Doug, voices you expect, like the governor and Coach Cal, but what we found extraordinary today is the outpouring of love from fans. So many small interactions with Denny over the years that left such an impact. UofL fan Chris Mattingly remembered meeting him in a hospital waiting room in Louisville, saying that was a day he will never forget. And Tara Simpson here commenting that she still has a small basketball he signed more than 20 years ago. We're also hearing from some names you're going to recognize. Coach Calipari shared photos of himself and Denny Crum calling him truly a Hall of Famer. He goes on to say he was kind, had a great sense of humor, but make no mistake about it, he was a competitor who wanted to win every game. Governor Randy Bashir tweeted Denny Crum was a basketball legend, making an impact here in Kentucky by leading Louisville to win multiple national titles. But even more importantly, he made a difference in the community by running an inclusive program for all to enjoy. He will be greatly missed. And Senator Mitch McConnell threw it all the way back to the 80s with a couple of pictures. Take a look at this one. Saying here, it's with deep sadness that Elaine and I have learned of the loss of the great Mr. March, the University of Louisville men's basketball coaching legend Denny Crum. For three decades, Coach Crum led the Cardinals to unparalleled successes, bringing the city and the university national attention. Well, funeral arrangements have not yet been finalized, but once we have that information, we'll share how the Pitt family does plan to honor his legacy. Kent, Doug. Shay, thank you. Well, he was on the 1980 championship team, former Crum player and now radio host Jerry Eves, also athletic director at Simmons College of Kentucky, is joining us. You know, you told me you talked to his wife, Susan Sweeney Crum, this morning. Uh, how is she doing? How is his family doing? I know the coach had been in the care of hospice for quite some time. No question. He passed away with Susan at his side. She's doing as well as can be expected. Uh, we knew it was coming. I was there about three weeks ago, and coach wasn't talking a lot then, but he would try to recognize you, but he wasn't speaking a lot, and all the players knew that this day was coming, but Susan's doing as well as can be expected. And you know, everyone always says, how can you do? What do you do? What do you say? It's really, really, really hard. What kind of legacy does he has, have? You can't put legacy on Coach Crum's name. Jerry, He's bigger than that. Jerry, let me ask you this. You know, you played for the man. You've known him so many years. How has your relationship evolved over the course of time? From recruitment to playing, to coaching for Coach Crum, and then also when I got the North Carolina A&T job, calling him to mentor me. And one of the most important things he always told me is, limit your rules, but stand by them. Always. Why, why did you like him? Why, how did he connect with his players? And what are some of the things you took from him and you used it when you were a coach, the, the things you steal from a mentor that made you better? I tell people all the time, Coach Crum was more than a mentor. He wrote me up for cursing as an assistant coach for he for cursing some of the players. 
And he says, all you're doing is showing your own ignorance. You're better than that. Coach Crum was always for someone else. He was selfless. It was never about Coach Crum. It was always about what's the betterment for you. Where can I put you? You have to strive for better. And I always tell people, was he trying to get, he put it in my folder. It's there. But he wasn't trying to get me fired. He was trying to promote me. He was trying to teach me there is a better way. One of the things that, that I've kind of gathered throughout the course of the years of, of talking to you and, and several of your former teammates and all the players that played for, for Denny Crum was I think he had an authentic, unique relationship with each and every one. He found some way to connect with each and one of his former players. Well, as a player, uh, as a point guard, he was very stern with me. Yeah, you may not have always liked him in that role. <laughs> he would roll up this little poster and say, Jerry, if you don't want to sit next to me, you better do better. But as assistant coach, he was always, what are your ideas? What do you think we can do better? And as a father, he always used to tell me, raise your kids the best that you can. It's the number one job that you have. Not your team, not your players, your kids, your two boys. And he remember my two boys because they would run around his house when we were recruiting, eating breakfast at the pool, hanging on the bear. He said, that's your most important job. They were more than welcome to come to every practice, every locker room. Nothing was closed, like today. Coaches today in these closed locker room things is crazy. Coach Crum was not that way. Different time. Well, I enjoy listening to your show. It's on every morning now. You're on early at 7 a.m., I yes. believe, on uh, 790, 790. a.m. The Jerry Eve Show. I'm sure you'll continue the conversation tomorrow. Morning. Oh, absolutely. All right. Thanks Thank for having me. Thank you, Jerry, for coming in. Well, next, I had the good fortune in the 90s to look into Denny Crum's work behind the scenes, his generous spirit giving back to Louisville, remaining loyal to UofL. A look back at what I found when Denny Crum, a Hall of Fame life, continues on WHAS 11 News. Welcome back. Coach Crum was on the job and active in a day when there were no cell phones, no constant posting of your every moment on Twitter. Well, and that means Denny was out there doing things all over Louisville for people and kids all over this region that we would only hear about secondhand later. Back in the 90s, before he retired, I kept hearing these stories of his generosity, and here's what I found. Denny Crum has been known to walk straight from the basketball court right to a local charity event. Coach Crum, he, he puts his arm around everybody, has his picture made with everyone. Denny Crum signing autographs, uh, auctioning uh, off items. Without Coach Crum, we would not have raised the money that we raised. I know that I feel certain of that. And just where are these 300 invited guests he's never met? They're at Crum's own house in Jefferson County. He shows people through his house. Just built a new theater on his house, and he takes people through that, and uh, very, he even invites them to come back. Every summer, Crum hosts this picnic at his place. $80,000 last year, and that brought us to fourth in the nation of the 200 universities that take part in, in uh, Coaches versus Cancer. It's a thank you on behalf of Coaches versus Cancer, a specific fundraiser through the American Cancer Society that Crum has helped raise a half million dollars for over six years. Well, he knows that's one of the things that'll attract people to give more money. I don't know a single time that he ever said no to. Denny's a head coach and I'm one of the assistants. The former UofL athletic director, Bill Olson, says Crum's insistence on helping Louisville charities still amazes him. I thought that he'd eventually burn out. I saw him do this 30 some years ago. And he's doing it today just like he did when he first came here. And Olson tells the story of a bedridden woman in the same nursing home as his own mother, who was a U of L fan. Her room was decorated, her wall, the doors, with all U of L things that Denny had brought to her. And I went up when I found this out, and the nurses told me that he came at least once a month, sometimes more often than that, to visit her. And, uh, and that's the way that. I've heard those kind of stories that uh, he's done that so often for other people. Visits the children on his own, and when we call, doesn't hesitate. He's over in a flash. At Coastier Children's Hospital, they say Crum delivers food and gifts to staff people and delights children with visits with increasing frequency around the holidays. He comes in on his own. We won't even know about it. He just takes the time to come over because he cares. I can call Coach just about any time. And if he's not there, I'll leave a message and he'll get right back with me. In 1997, the coach would mark his 600th win. But with questions surrounding the state of the program at the time, he was starting to get asked about his future. You know, I still like what I'm doing. I really enjoy coaching. I enjoy working with young people. And, and uh, I just think at this stage of my life, uh, I'm not really concerned or interested in anything long term anyway. 
Four years later and 74 more wins, the coach chose his 64th birthday, March 2nd, 2001, to announce his retirement from the Daily Grind. Denny Crum retired with $7 million to be paid by U L over 15 years, a $2 million severance agreement, and a six-figure assistant for development consultant job where he reported directly to the president of U L. It's my wish that, uh, that I retire from this university when I do retire, whenever that happens, and hopefully it'll be a ways down the road. I've got... <laughs> But it was a forced retirement, and the way it was handled put a wedge between the famed coach and the athletic department under athletic director Tom Jurich. I asked Jurich in 2017, his first ever public comments on his poor relationship with Crum, if he regretted handling things the way he did. The biggest fight on change you had, what was it? Which one was it, do you think? Probably Coach Crum. You know, I think everybody recognized it was time to do it. It's just nobody wanted to do it. You know? And that's a credit to him. And that's why I'll never take anything away from him. You've brought him up several times. Do you think you handled that one badly? No, no, I don't. I don't think there's any other way I could have handled it. But U of L fans eventually heard about how Crum was being treated, and they loved him back even more for it. Why? It simply came down to his love for this community. And what I learned as he was wrapping up his career in 2001 about his efforts to give back. In retirement, Crum showed up at charity golf tournaments more often and continued to be on a roll of warmth and caring for the city and the school, even though he may have harbored bitterness toward how he was treated. The former athletic director, Bill Olson, described Denny Crum's 30 years of touching lives this way. It's not hundreds, it's thousands. It's probably over 30 years, it may be hundreds of thousands of people that he's taken time to do that with. And he was doing it long before other coaches. Denny Crum, you can say, was a Hall of Famer when it comes to showing it's more than a game. We feel an obligation to uh, do the best we can and make this community a better place to live and raise kids. And that's what we're trying to do, just help make it a better place. So we all have personal memories of our connections with Coach Crum over the years. And I remember U of L in the 90s was making its way through the tournament in Atlanta and the station sent a bunch of us sports crews and news crews. I went for the news crews and I needed to get a hold of Coach Crum. Something had developed and uh, somebody said, just call his hotel room. Well, as you know, getting a hold of Coach today is like going through Fort Knox. There's layers and layers of press people. So I called the hotel room and said, can I speak to Coach Denny Crum? Bing, the phone rings. Denny answers his, his hotel room, bedroom phone. Says, yeah, Doug, I'll meet you in 30 minutes down on the street for the interview. And sure enough, he showed right up. He was so generous with his time and accessible. I love that. Well, first off, you're right. That would never happen in today's <laughs> time and, and, and age. I remember a little bit more than 10 years ago, I was playing in a golf scramble out at Hurstbourne. Denny Crum at the time, I think he had like a, it was like an injury or something like that that he was dealing with. He couldn't play golf, but he was in our group. He was riding around in a, in a golf cart. And this was before I started playing golf. I was really bad. And I'm standing over a shot. I'm getting ready to hit it. And he says to me, he goes, now, now Kent, what you want to do is you want to hit it about 10 yards past the pin. That slope just going to bring it right down. <laughs> I'm listening to this, and I just stand up. I said, Coach, you've been with me all day. You know I don't know where this is going to go. And he goes, I know, but I've just got to do what i got to do. <laughs> <laughs> and did it pay off? No, I think I... I think I shaked it way to the right, but he was still coaching. That's right. He was still coaching. Great memories of Denny Crum and more coming up as Denny Crum lived a life that impacted hundreds of people in our community. He changed countless lives forever. Joining us live next, Bellarmine's men had basketball coach Scotty Davenport, who got his first shot at coaching under Denny Crum. Welcome back. We want to welcome in right now Scotty Davenport, head men's basketball coach at Bellarmine for the Knights. And you know, Scotty, you are Iroquois High School graduate, University of Louisville graduate, walked on in the JV team for, for Louisville, grad, graduate assistant, came back as an assistant under Denny Crum. What did he mean to you? The, the ultimate mentor, giving, caring. I have based one of the key recruiting components we look at is caring. There's so many analytics. There's so many breakdowns of everybody. Yes, coach could evaluate somebody who could run, jump, dunk, et cetera, but caring. 
caring is a special talent. And I'll challenge Doug, I'll challenge Kent, I will challenge everyone. I've done this throughout the day. Name me one time he said no to someone in need. He didn't. No. I mean, I mean the, 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 the stories are legendary. A former player, a, a coach, a, a manager, a, a trainer. Did he ever say no to someone in need? No. Well, how about you? You started as a graduate assistant under him. You, you also uh, coached under many other coaches. You, you, you came up the old-fashioned way. What did you take from Coach Crum that you continue to use to this day that, that still works? <laughs> Kent's going to go crazy. He was the ultimate in terms of patient. Can you see me, Coach? I'm not the most patient guy. To be a teacher, when it says Coach Crum, it should say slash teacher. That's what it should say. And, and that coupled with this mentality, very seldom, if ever, will the five best players beat the best team. Always has and always will be a team game. And that's how he taught the game. It was bigger than you. I'll bring out something better in you. When you got that call to be a full-time assistant at the University of Louisville under Denny Crum, what was that like? Ellen and Arena, back then was Cardinal Arena. If you put a basketball court up, free throw line extended far in, I can put an X on the court. Russ and Doug were, were little elementary school, middle school kids, where I grabbed them in the middle of 144 campers. And said, coach just hired. We got a job. I could put an X on the floor. Uh, he, he cared so much. And Coach Tino one time told me he wasn't going to keep me because everybody told him not to. And I looked, I said, I thought people liked me. He says, because you were so loyal to Coach Crump. And I told him I'm keeping him because he'll be that loyal to me. And thank you, Coach. Coach Scotty Davenport, thank you. He's we, impacted. We so appreciate your time. My life every day as a coach by caring. Hey, what a lesson for all of us as we finish our special here on such a note from Coach Scotty Davenport. Thank you. Thank you for coming in.